All right, we're going to be going over the muscle of the arm here. You can see that this is a right arm. All right, so on the top here, we can see your deltoid. It's going to be that big muscle on your shoulder. So I'm just going to take that off so it doesn't get in the way. All right, this muscle that we can see right here, this is your pectoralis major. It's only a small piece of it, but that's what this muscle is symbolizing. Okay, so if we turn around here, you can see here this bone is your scapula. You can see here your coracoid process. So this muscle right here is going to be the subscapularis. Then this muscle right here, this is a tricky one. This is just a little piece of it, but this is going to be your latissimus dorsi. You can just tell by where it's coming in from and where it's going to insert over here. And then finally, this last muscle you can see on this side, it's going to be the teres major. The major is going to sit inferior to the minor. We'll see the minor on the back side. Okay, uh, then I need to flip this to get this view for you guys. This muscle right here is cut away, but this is going to be your trapezius. Right here, we are going to have your supraspinatus muscle. Sitting above that scapular spine, it's that supraspinatus. Flip this again. Again, here's that scapular spine. This is going to be your infraspinatus muscle. All of this. Okay. Then I'm going to flip this again. Okay. This muscle right here is your teres major. We're looking at it from the backside now. Right above it. We have your teres minor. So don't get that confused. This is all sub or infraspinatus. Infraspinatus right here. Then just this muscle right here is teres minor and teres major. Alright, now I'm going to be following the lab manual more for you. Those other ones weren't on the arm section of the lab manual. But starting at the top, we have the coracobrachialis, it's going to be right here. Coracobrachialis. It's going to originate here at this coracoid process and it sits medial to the short head of the biceps brachii. Okay, so we started that coracobrachialis. Next muscle we have is the biceps brachii. That's this whole muscle right here. There's two different heads. You have the short head right here, which originates here at the coracoid process, and then you have the long head here. I'm going to flip this around because it's important to see. This right here is a continuation of that long head of the biceps brachii and it's going to insert at the superior lip of that glenoid cavity. Okay, so then we're going to go back to this view. So we can see here that long head of the biceps brachii, deep to that is going to sit your brachialis muscle. There. Okay, next uh, term on your list is the brachioradialis muscle. And that's this muscle right here. Okay. Next term we have is the triceps brachii. So for that, I'm going to need to flip us around here. Okay. So when we look here, we're going to have three heads to that triceps brachii. We're going to have a medial head, a long head, and a lateral head. So one more time, the medial head is this little short one you can only see a little piece of. And you have the long head and the lateral head. Okay, next term on your manual, I'm going to need to flip around here. Okay, your next term is a supinator. So I'm going to have to remove some stuff here. So I removed this brachioradialis. So deep to that brachioradialis, you can see right here, your supinator. Okay, and then sitting it more to the surface is going to be your pronator teres. A good way to remember that is to remember PT, pinky to thumb. I hope you remember pronator teres. All right, and then pronator quadratus. You're not going to be able to see on this model, but it would sit way deep up here. Okay. Alright, 
And then this back on. Okay. All right, so next terms, we have the flexor carpi, ulnaris, and radialis. So flexors means you're gonna be curling in the fingers like that. So uh, first we're gonna have your flexor carpi radialis. It's gonna be right here. You can follow that tendon, it goes up here and it sits on the radial side with that thumb there. Next we're gonna have your flexor carpi ulnaris. It sits right here on that pinky side with the ulna. Okay, next term we're gonna have is the palmaris longus. It's going to be this one right here. Now, the primaris longus will really serve as a landmark for you when you're trying to identify uh, these muscles in the arm because you can see it has this huge insertion up here. Really big bulges out there. So that's going to be something to key in on. So just know that your primaris longus sits dead in the middle with that big insertion. And then on this side of it, you're going to have that flexor carpi radialis and this side your flexor carpi ulnaris. So that's going to be how you'll find those. Okay. All right, our next term here is going to be the flexor digitorum. You can see that right here, sitting deep to the tendons of the palmaris longus and flexor carpi radialis. So this is the flexor digitorum here. Also, if we take this piece off, we can see even more of the flexor digitorum exposed. So this whole muscle will be the flexor digitorum. Next, we're going to take a look at your flexor pollicis. This here is going to be your flexor pollicis brevis, right here. And then, if we take the flexor digitorum off, you can see here, this is going to be the flexor pollicis longus. For lab, just know the flexor pollicis brevis. So, flexor pollicis, right here. Next to it, just for your information, this is going to be the brevis head of the abductor pollicis, but you don't need to know that, just FYI. Alright, next term we have, we're going to flip around. We're going to take a look at your extensor carpi ulnaris and extensor carpi radialis. So when we're looking at the top of the arm here, just as on the bottom, you can get a good view here. Just as on the bottom, you're going to start by finding a landmark. On the top here, your landmark is going to be this extensor digitorum. It's going to be this one right here. And the reason that's a good landmark is because you can follow the tendons going all the way out to the fingers. So if you ever get confused, just follow those tendons out to the fingers. The extensor digitorum has two heads. So this is extensor digitorum. And then this right here is another head of that extensor digitorum. So it's two heads to that extensor digitorum. Then, um, on either side of that, here on the ulnar side, we're going to have the extensor carpi ulnaris. Right here. It's extensor carpi ulnaris. Then if we go on the other side of the extensor digitorum, we see here the extensor carpi radialis. And the extensor carpi radialis also has two heads. So this is going to be extensor carpi radialis. And this is going to be extensor carpi radialis, sitting right over top of this third one, which is the brachial radialis, as we had before. All right. Next term we're going to have is going to be the extensor pollicis. Extensor pollicis is going to sit right here. This here. And it's sitting next to it. This is another head. This is the ad abductor brev. Sorry, abductor. It's one more time. Abductor pollicis longus. Right here. You guys don't need to know that one. You just need to know extensor pollicis. And finally, the last two terms is the extensor retinaculum. It's going to be that sheath holding those tendons down. Flip to the other side. See right here flexor retinaculum. I'll take a look at the muscles of the thigh. Our first muscle here we're going to have is the iliacus. You can see it touching that ilium, traveling down. And then over here we have the psoas major. After it passes this inguinal canal, 
it becomes the iliopsoas. If I rotate this model here, we'll go to the back side, and your big butt muscle, that'll be your gluteus maximus. If I take this off, underneath you can see your gluteus medius, but you cannot see your gluteus minimus. All right, now rotate this again. If we look right here, this muscle in here is going to be called your adductor longus. If I rotate it back, this muscle here will be called your adductor magnus. If I rotate it again, we'll look at your tensor fascia latte. That'll be this muscle here, your tensor fascia latte. That sits within your iliotibial tract. If I rotate back over here, this muscle right here we can see is your gracilis. Then we'll look at your hacky sack muscle, which is also called your sartorius. If I turn this around, down here, we'll take a look at your biceps femoris. There's a long and a short head. This little piece down here that you can see is going to be your biceps femoris short head. And then this long one here will be your biceps femoris long head. Then we'll rotate over and we'll look at your semitendinosus and that'll be this one. You can signify it by that big tendon down at the bottom. So semitendinosus. And then the flat one underneath that and most medial is going to be called your semimembranosus. So you can see that on both sides. Then we'll rotate around, we'll look at your quadriceps. Your quadriceps from Horus are made up of your vastus medialis. Your vastus intermedius will be deep to this muscle under there. And then your vastus lateralis over here. The last part of your quadriceps from Horus will be your rectus from Horus. And that will be that muscle sitting right in the middle on top. We'll take a look at the muscles of the lower leg. We'll start out the two heads of the gastrocnemius, right here. Then we'll look at the soleus muscle. That'll be this flatter one beneath the gastrocnemius. If I take this off, we're going to look at the plantaris muscle, and that'll be the tendon, and then the muscle will come up to here. And that crosses your knee joint. Next, we'll look at the popliteus. And that'll be this fanning muscle right here. If I rotate the model, we'll look at tibialis anterior. And that'll be this muscle right here. Then we'll look at the extensor digitorum longus, and that'll be this muscle here. If I open this up, on the bottom side of this piece will be the extensor holicus longus. That'll be that piece right there. Then we'll flip over here and we'll look at the flexor holicus longus. 
and that'll be this big feather-like muscle here. On the back side of the leg, the two muscles cross. So this actually sits on the lateral side or on the digit side and crosses over at the ankle to go to the big toe or the holocus. And then this muscle here will be our flexor digitorum longest, starting on the big toe side and crossing over to the digit side. If I rotate the muscle again, we'll look at your fibularis or peroneus muscles. That'll be right here. You don't have to distinguish between these muscles. Um, just know that they sit on the fibula and they're called the fibularis muscles. Then we'll look at the tibialis posterior. And that'll be this muscle right in here on the back side of the tibia, so tibialis posterior. Now we'll rotate the model and look at the extensor retinaculum. That'll be found on the front of the foot here, covering the tendons to the extensor muscles of the foot. If I rotate it again, we'll look at the flexor retinaculum and that will be here on the side of the foot, on the medial side of the foot. And if we come over here to the fibular side, we'll get the fibular retinaculum and that will be right here. The last structure that you need to know on this model will be the calcaneal tendon and that will be found right down here, sometimes commonly known as the Achilles tendon.